They are a part of someone's worst day. In an emergency situation, let's say you were in a wreck in the highway and your child was locked in the vehicle and they were trying to be extracted, they need life-saving care in seconds. I'm Travis Patterson. My background, I was in the Marine Corps for a very long time as a helicopter pilot, uh, and then retired and was very fortunate to join the team here at Halo Flight. Uh, 501c3 nonprofit helicopter air ambulance company, and we are headquartered here in Corpus Christi, Texas. The history of the organization is actually pretty neat. We were founded in 1987 by a few ranchers uh, after an unfortunate accident on a ranch, and they realized a need um, to get medical care to people in rural communities very quickly. Um, so they got together, they leased a helicopter, they got a few volunteer pilots, a few volunteer clinical staff, uh, and that's how Halo Flight started. And we're now uh, soon to be six helicopters, 54 employees, and we are the sole air ambulance provider for a 28,000 square mile area across South Texas. Roger that, Halo 2, show you safe on deck and be Yeah, uh, So there are some challenges associated with being a nonprofit. We do need to fundraise. Um, these helicopters are not cheap. So we have to be very specific about where we choose to spend it. So our commitment is to provide the best trained pilots, the best trained mechanics, the best trained clinical staff, uh, and the best trained dispatchers operating the most state-of-the-art aircraft in the air ambulance industry. I had no intention of, I want to be the first to have this HUMS program, but when the opportunity presented itself to us, uh, it was too good to pass up. It's easy to justify an investment in maintenance efficiency and safety. So it was a fairly simple, sell to my board of directors. It took me about five minutes once I explained what the program did. I think the biggest thing they were excited about was the kind of uh, predictive maintenance ability uh, and the safety factor. Purchase price of the aircraft is what it is, but the, what's more valuable are the people inside of it. Instead of waiting for something to break, taking it out of service, waiting on a part, we'll have a little bit of lead time, know when we need to order a part, and have it waiting when we're ready to replace it. I'm really looking forward to getting the whole fleet set up with it. Once we get all of them operating on HUMS. I think the more data we can provide, the more data points pulled from HUMS, the more efficient it's going to be and the better product we're going to have. Hi, everyone's inbound with a 262 mail plane of chest pain. Hey, everyone, if you copy, we'll see My name is Michael Lopez. Um, I'm the director of operations here at Halo Flight. I'm also one of the check pilots. My number one thing is safety of our operation and certificate compliance, making sure that we're abiding by the rules and the regulations of the FAA and we're doing it safely. HUMS is one of the things that we're looking to improve our overall operations, identifying component failure or potential component failure or wearing and addressing those issues as they come. We're increasing our IFR operations here at Halo Flight. It's paramount that we increase the maintenance readiness of our aircraft. So should we have a component that's starting to wear, we identify quickly while we're on the ground or before the operation as opposed to being in the clouds. It's very, very reassuring for our pilots and our medical crew, as people that fly it and those that fly in it, that we're doing everything we can to, to ensure the airworthiness of the aircraft at all times. Glenn Dodson, I'm Director of Maintenance for Halo Flight. We're a 911 base. If we don't have an aircraft available, you know, we could be risking people's lives. The impact on the patient, it would impact the hospital if we ended up having a chip light and ended up landing in a field. Now we got to figure out the logistics of getting a ground crew and somebody out there to them. Depending on what it is, I mean, we got to land where we land. Having the hums could prevent all that. It kind of goes up, it gives you an idea of when that's going to fail. Once we get to a comfortable spot and we maintain it, and it's scheduled versus unscheduled. What it foresees and catches prior to failure, that's just a huge safety factor. We're going to be well above other operators. Once we get all of our aircraft on there, then it's going to be a huge money savings because it's uh, literally time. Because for us to go out, get a pilot, wait for a pilot, hook all the gear up, run the aircraft, check the tracking balance on it, take the gear off. We don't have to do any of that. We were able to go in, read the numbers, know that it was under, and sign it off. So if I were discussing with another HEMS CEO or HEMS operator about the GPMS HEMS program, I would just tell them exactly what it's done for us. 
It's a fantastic program if you're looking to invest in your safety. Anything you can do to be more efficient is going to save money in the long run anyway. Before long, HEMS operators using systems like HUMS will be the norm as opposed to the exception.